Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharti and we are here at KubeCon in Chicago. Today we have with us Michael Maxi, VP of Business Development at Zadeda. Michael, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's my pleasure to host you today. I have covered Zadeda in past, but it's a good idea to just remind our viewers, what do you folks do? Zadeda provides edge orchestration and management. So what that means is you can deploy workloads to edge devices running outside your data center, and we manage the whole life cycle of that application. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we are here at KubeCon. Did you folks make any announcements here? We did, we had a very exciting announcement this morning. Uh, we announced a managed Kubernetes service. So we've had customers deploying Kubernetes on the edge for about three or four years now, uh, but mainly in a bring your own fashion, where they're kind of bringing their own and now we're offering it as a service, so you can buy it from us, we support it, it's fully integrated into our Edge platform. So we're super excited about this new offering. If you look at managing Kubernetes, you know, there are so many solutions, you know, sure. especially managed Kubernetes. What is new that Zadeda is bringing to the market? Yeah, so for us, we're bringing um, that managed Kubernetes in a very small footprint, right? So our customers run maybe one or three devices at the Edge, and we're delivering a really lightweight K3S based Kubernetes distribution. It's the runtime. We still partner with great orchestrators like Rancher and Rafe and others around the building here, but that runtime is now supported directly by us. And if I remember the data early days, or you know, we started talking about edge computer or cloud computing, you know, which was not the, this cloud computing, which was more or less near the users. Yep. So, so talk a bit about how much evolution did you see of that computing? Yeah, so uh, the evolution of the edge market yeah, I, I think it's starting to accelerate. You know, we've been talking about the year of the edge for about three years now, but uh, it's starting to feel a little bit more like reality. Um, what we're seeing pretty consistently is, you know, a couple applications running on a single device. Uh, often something old running right next to a Kubernetes cluster in new. So they'll have maybe a Windows app that controls a robot or connects to a car or something to that effect. And then they'll stream data into a Kubernetes cluster and do AI or inference or something on the edge. So we're deploying these full solutions on a little piece of hardware from Intel or AMD. And let's also talk about the role of Kubernetes because there are also low footprint Kubernetes. There are a lot of you know zero Ks and a lot of things are there. So talk about uh, the low powered version of yeah. Kubernetes for these kind of use cases. Yeah, I mean it's required first of all, right? Because it's hard to run the entire ecosystem on one box. Uh, we see a, a lot of K3S which is a pretty well-known smaller distribution. Um, and that is really designed to run on individual devices or three devices. It has a smaller feature set. You know, you're not doing elastic scale when you have one device. So things like that are, are removed from the distribution, but it still brings the full API, it brings the full experience, and people can deploy to it just like they can in the cloud or in their own data center. And also how different is the full scale Kubernetes to this low footprint because we talk about that complexity which mm -hmm. cannot be done at the edge use case. Sure. So the, the difference is, well one, it's size and, and CPU and utilization, right? So they've really built the binary to run in smaller environments. But with that means you're kind of ripping out a lot of the projects, right? So I don't know how many Kubernetes projects there are, there's a couple hundred, I don't know, there's an eye chart full of them. But what you end up running on the, on the edge is, is kind of the core services. So think about like etcd, Think about uh, like the container runtimes and those core components designed to run in a really lightweight container. They're a lightweight package. I should say. Right, right. Uh, and now, f the reason I was asking this question was to just go there and then when we talk about managed Kubernetes in this space, so once again, how different is it from the managing fully scale Kubernetes to this? And once again, what value is Zereda bringing there? Sure, yeah. So the managed piece is that smaller runtime, right? So we're not, we're not delivering Istio at scale on a single edge device, right? So it is managing, it's based on K3S. We're partnering with SUSE on this. Um, and the benefit for us is, you know, at the edge, it's really the cloud on your hardware. That's kind of how we view it. So we've always supported Terraform. We've always supported sort of cloud native patterns, but we've had the customer kind of bring their own runtime. Uh, and with this new managed service offering, they can buy it directly from us. We support it. We're going to upgrade it. We're going to keep it current. And they can kind of take the eye off the ball on that piece and sort of concentrate on the applications up top. When we talk about once again, Kubernetes, uh, the discussions are, it's too complex, too co complicated. Sure. Uh, it takes, consume a lot of not only developer time, but a lot of company resources. There are a lot of discussions, you know, not a lot of discussion on the Twitter, like, no. Is there something next Kubernetes, you know, which is going right. to be simple if you notice that discussion? What are you seeing there? Yeah, great question. Um, 
So we're seeing uh, shops that love Kubernetes and have Kubernetes skills embracing Kubernetes on the edge, right? We're also seeing customers that aren't using Kubernetes try to do it, and to your point, like, it's very difficult. So what we've seen in that case often is switching to a, maybe a different runtime. Uh, we partner with like Avasa, you can do native containers, there's an IBM offering, there's lots of sort of solutions that aren't Kubernetes but you can run containers against. And then forward looking even more, I think WASM is, is starting to be, to be interesting. We're not hearing it directly from our customers yet, but that really lightweight you know, model conversion, we think will be a, a big player in the edge in the long term. Right, this can be totally off topic or totally irrelevant discussion, but if you look at the whole old you know, Linux map, you know, big players and then ARM came sure. and you know, their developers wanted more resource and even Linux was not happy, but now everybody's benefiting from it. Sure. So similarly, you know, when we look at you know, K3S and a lot of other offerings, you know, do you think it might help in reducing some of the complexity of Kubernetes I or do you think, think so. it's a totally different world altogether? No, I think it, it helps, right? And, and I think as you know, we productize it more and, and we sort of build simplicity into it, that will help a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're big fans of open source. Like our, our native Evo S is open source. So anybody can come contribute and build on it. And you know, we've had our customers help improve their own product. So I think the same thing will happen in K3S and the Kubernetes space. I do want to throw this question. It depends whether it's relevant to you folks or not, is that these days almost everybody talks about generative AI. Okay. So I want to see that, you know, what does generative AI mean for Zeneda? It could be seen as people running generative AI workloads, okay. or it could also be generative AI may help right. the Kubernetes. So I think for what we're seeing on the edge is not building big large language models on the edge, right? That's really done centrally in a cloud or a data center. Um, but what we do see a lot of is data aggregation, tagging, and cleaning, right? We talk to customers who are like, hey, I want to do edge AI, and we're like, okay, how's your data look? And they're like, what data, right? So a lot of customers are just sort of getting into the practice of cleaning and tagging and collecting all their data so they can build these large language models. Um, the other two scenarios we see, we see a fair amount of inference at the edge. So they'll take that large language model or any model really, and then do like video inference at the edge. Um, and then the last thing I would say is um, machine learning. So distributed machine learning is pretty common. So you'll see like data coming off a robot or out of a factory or PLC into a machine learning model that then eventually pushes it up to a cloud for an aggregated data pool. So we're kind of in the data collection space for large language models. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum where we're doing inferencing on the edge. But more thing which is different when we talk about the full stack, you know, not full stack is not the right word, like full scale data center sure. versus edge is that you have all the resources there, you know. Right. But edge devices, it may be on the top of a tree, it may yes. be top of the mountain, it could right. be on a remote vehicle. You cannot send your teams for repair all the time, so they have to do a lot of self-healing, they have to yeah. do a lot of, so what are the challenges that are associated with it? I'm not talking edge in general, right. but in the context of Kubernetes yeah. and the men. Well, I think you hit one of them, which is people are expensive, right? It's hard to find Kubernetes workers and then tell them they have to drive to remote Texas every day, like, that's very difficult. Um, not that Texas is bad, but you know, I think uh, the, the cost of people visiting these sites is really high. So to your point, you have to bake in failover and fail back. You have to think about network failover. You have to think about, you know, how do I make sure that the operating system can be upgraded? Right? You don't want to send a guy with a USB every six months. You want to do that when security patches come out. So you have to think full stack more than Kubernetes. And that's where security and access and people kind of come in and collide on a lot of those things. So that's the stuff we've been solving for the last five, six years um, in open source. So go take a look at Eve and you can see some of the techniques we use around that. What kind of use cases are you seeing? Uh, as you said, you know, it's catching up, but there are still a lot of folks who are using it already. Um, the use cases we see are pretty bespoke. Um, you know, everybody has their favorite data flavor and these sorts of things, but we see a lot of computer vision, um, be it for watching people or watching, you know, gas flares on an oil rig. Uh, we saw a fair amount of computer vision. And then the data case I mentioned earlier, that collection of data, starting to build that AI pipeline, that's, that's a pretty common use case as well. Michael, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about Zededa, your new offering here. I really love the way you explain the difference between the full scale data center versus Edge. Edge has its own place and you know it's the market is still catching up. Yeah. But uh, we'll see and after 5G, 6G, and a lot of things are going to change, which also means that uh, we should talk more because a lot of things are changing. In the, so it. I look forward to our next discussion, but I really appreciate your time today. Likewise, I really appreciate it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.